look at the life of our Prophet وسلم, he faced far more powerful struggles than we did. His anxieties were far greater than anything we can imagine. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed at the very first major crisis of his life, of his spiritual life, Allah revealed a surah that will be the subject of our khutbah today because it deals with how to grapple with anxiety and stress. It deals with what to do when you're facing challenges. It deals with what to do when you're so overcome. You might be verging on depression. You might be thinking thoughts that are un-Islamic. And our Prophet Wasallam himself went through something of this nature, a very minuscule amount at the beginning of his prophethood. And Allah revealed a surah that set him aright in this regard. If you look at the early seerah of the Prophet Wasallam, in the first year of the revelation of the Quran, there was a time frame, some scholars said up to six months, that Allah did not reveal any Quran. So the Quran came, Iqra came, Muzammil came, Muddathir came, and then after a while, no Quran. And the Prophet ﷺ began wondering, what's wrong? Is there something wrong with me? Maybe Allah doesn't love me anymore. Maybe I've done something to displease Allah and I'm not worthy of Allah's love. These feelings that we now call anxiety, borderline depression, these feelings of doubting your self-worth, they came to none other than the greatest human being ever to walk the face of this world. And for many weeks, many months, no revelation came. So much so that he began to think that Allah does not like him anymore that he is not beloved to Allah, that he has failed in the mission. Then, at the very end of this time frame, Abu Lahab's wife taunted him and said, what's this? We haven't seen any Quran for so long. Maybe your shaytan has abandoned you, Audhu Billah. And this really hurt him, sallallahu alayhi wa And he went home very depressed, anxious. And it was at that point in time that Allah revealed the surah that we all know. It is surah Al-Duha. وَالضُّحَا وَاللَّيْلِ إِذَا سَجَى Allah gives the oath, the qasam, and we all know qasam means Allah wants to draw attention. Allah wants to emphasize what He is saying is true and listen to what I'm about to say. And by giving the qasam of the dawn, what does the dawn symbolize? In every culture, in every language, in every society, in every civilization, what does the dawn symbolize? The beginning of a new era. It is a new day. It is new opportunity. It is new hope. Yesterday is gone. Today is a new day. وَالضُّحَا This is how Allah begins the surah. Don't look at the past, look at the future. Don't worry about what happened. Today is a new day with new opportunities. The sun is coming up again. The sun is bringing new opportunities. The day is bringing new opportunities. Allah gives a qasam by the morning sun that is coming up. The early time, which is the time of barakah, the time of activity, the time when everybody wakes up and the hustle and bustle and the traffic, all of this is saja, And the night when it becomes calm, which is the time of sleep, which is the time of sukoon. Once again, both of these are contrasting. When you go to sleep as well, the worries of this dunya go away. When you wake up and the sun is coming up, no matter how bad was yesterday, today is a new day. Allah is giving qasam by both of these that the rest of the surah is true and authentic and correct. What is the rest of the surah? This is a negation. Stop feeling that you are worthless. Stop feeling that you're worth nothing. Your Lord has neither abandoned you nor does He hate you. Allah does does not hate any believer. No believer is despised by Allah. Yes, Allah does not love sins, but Allah loves those who turn to Him. Allah loves the repenter. Allah loves the muhsineen. Allah loves the muttaqeen. Allah loves the mu'mineen. Our Prophet wasallam said, Allah loves His servants more than a mother loves her baby child. Allah is the wadud, the one who is ever loving. مَا وَدَّعَكَ رَبُّكَ وَمَا قَلَى Your Lord has neither abandoned you, nor does He despise you. No doubt, this ayah is in the secret to the Prophet ﷺ. And no doubt he occupies the maximum share. But it is true that every person who believes in that Prophet, every person who considers himself of the Ummah of that Prophet ﷺ, a share of this verse will apply to him or her as well. Your Lord does not hate you, O Muslim. Your Lord does not despise you, O believer in Allah. Your Lord has not abandoned you, O you who says, La ilaha illallah. Your Lord will
will never abandon you. Did he not create you? Did he not guide you? Did he not give you all that you have? Stop feeling this sense of worthlessness. Your Lord has not abandoned you and he does not despise you. He is with you and he loves you. Is a statement of negation. It is not true the way that you feel, Ya Rasulullah. Now this verse comes and after getting rid of the negativity, it's substituted with positivity. Get rid of the negative feeling and think positive. Get rid of the pessimism and change it with optimism. Tomorrow will be a better day. The future will be better than the past. The future, meaning in this dunya, will be better than the past. This is a part of our creed. Our Prophet ﷺ said, Allah loves optimism. It's an authentic hadith. Memorize it. Allah loves optimism. It is a part of Iman to be optimistic. We think tomorrow will be better than yesterday. Today the Meccans are persecuting you. Today your followers are being killed. Today this is happening. Tomorrow you will enter this city as a conqueror. The day after tomorrow, Three days from now, from beginning to end, you will see Muslims everywhere in every corner as we see right now. Always be optimistic. Now somebody will say, but sometimes the future is not better than the past. And we say, perhaps in this dunya, perhaps for some people, tomorrow will be a little bit more difficult than yesterday. But, for every single believer without exception, even if this world is a world of misery and pain, the believer has something else to look forward to. And that is the real akhirah. That is the akhirah of Jannah. Okay, maybe this dunya is tough. Okay, maybe you're going through some tough times, but never forget there is an akhirah. And in that akhirah, Allah Azza wa Jal will reward you. Allah will reward and reward and reward. There shall be everlasting bliss, optimism in this dunya and also more importantly in the akhirah. Okay, life is tough. Allah, sometimes it is tough. Maybe, maybe, whatever issue we're having, we're not going to solve it in this dunya. Maybe that cancer will not be solved. Maybe our relative will not be cured. Maybe this and that, maybe, okay. But at the end of the day, this world is not the end world. Look forward to the akhirah, the eternal world. Don't concentrate on this dunya.